can I guess you can sit there? Okay, so the production possibilities model. Okay, so you want to write this down. It's the boundary between the combination of goods and services that can be produced and the combination that cannot be produced given the available factors of production. Okay, so it's the boundary between combination of goods and services that can be produced and not produced. So we use this model to explain four key concepts in economics. The first thing that we explain with this is opportunity cost. The second concept that we uh, model is economic efficiency. The third key concept is economic growth. And then finally, the fourth concept that we model with this is comparative advantage. There are four key assumptions of this model that you need to know about and keep in mind as we go through this. And the four key assumptions are that one, resources are fixed. Okay, so you want to write that down, resources are fixed, which means your land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability will not change. Second uh, assumption is that all of the resources are fully employed. That means that you're using all of these resources to their fullest capacity. The third assumption is that production is going to occur over a specified period of time. And finally, technology does not change. Okay, so the first one is uh, resources are fixed. Your land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability will not change. The second one is that resources are fully employed. The third one is that production will occur over a specified period of time. And finally, that technology does not change. You guys have that? What's number three again? Number three was um, production occurs over a specified period of time. And the fourth one was that technology does not change. Okay. So we're going to look at uh, modeling economic efficiency. Okay, and I'm going to give you a scenario in which a company has some production choices. Now we're going to look at the case of this company called JCO. Okay. And this is an electronics company. And JCO can produce either cameras or CD players. It has the fat choice. And it has all these possible combinations. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. And then we have combination for JCO to produce is zero CD players at 10 cameras. Another one is one CD player at eight cameras. A third one is two CD players and six cameras. A fourth one is three CD players and four cameras. A fifth one is four CD players and two cameras or five CD players and zero cameras. So we're going to map out the production possibilities from here. So when you're mapping out a production possibilities from here, 
you're basically using a scatter diagram. Normally when I map these out, what I like to do is have whatever is mentioned first to be on the x-axis. It doesn't really matter which side you put it on, but just for consistency, I always put whatever is mentioned first on the x-axis. And then over here is cameras. So, we know that one combination is zero CD players and ten cameras. That's point A. Another possible combination is one CD player and ten cameras. Uh, sorry, one and eight cameras. So that's point B. A third combination is point C, two CD players and ten cameras. So two, three, four, five, six cameras. Oh, six cameras. Thank you. Six, four, two. Okay, so it's two CD players and six cameras. That's point C. The fourth one is three CD players and four cameras, that's point D. The fifth com combination is four CD players and two cameras. And finally, the last one is five CD players and zero cameras. Okay. So when we connect these dots, we have our production possibilities frontier, or production possibilities curve. Your book will call it a curve. So any point along this line, or this curve, means that we're operating efficiently. So efficiently means we're using all of our resources, and they're fully employed. So everything on this line is efficient, and it's what we call productive efficiency, or productively efficient. Now, where we choose to locate on this line is going to be called allocatively efficient. It means where we think our marginal cost equals our marginal benefit. So we have allocated efficiency. And this is where marginal benefit, MB means marginal benefit, equals our marginal cost. MC equals marginal cost. Okay. So that's going to be where we decide is the best combination. Now any point inside this curve, any point in here is a space that is attainable. And any point outside is unattainable. Unattainable because we don't have enough resources to produce this. We can't produce three CD players and eight cameras because we don't have enough people or we don't have enough equipment. On the other hand, if we're in here, okay, at two cameras and one CD player, we're not using our resources efficiently. Okay, so we need to increase our production to get ourselves back on this line. Okay, so. Um, this model, as I said, is used to look at efficiency. Okay. Um, it's also used to measure opportunity cost. So when we look at measuring opportunity cost, what we're going to look at is the trade-off. Okay, how many cameras do we have to give up to produce CDs? So the formula, okay, you guys have this? Do you have a question? No? Okay. We're going to look at opportunity cost. And the formula for measuring opportunity cost is, um, hold on, I'm going to write it over here, because there's a certain way to say this. Okay, you guys have written all this down? Yes. Divided by 
what you get. So if we are producing zero CD players and 10 cameras, if we're over here at point A and we want to increase our production of CD players, we're going to have to give up how many cameras to move from point A to point B? Two. We give up two cameras, but we're going to get one CD player. Does that make sense? Okay. So then the formula would be we're going to give up two cameras and we're going to get one CD player. So if you reduce two over one, what is that? Two. Okay. So the way we express this is we're going to say in a statement the opportunity cost of one CD player is like cameras. Okay. So how many cameras do we have to give up to produce one CD player? Two. Two. So if I ask you, what is the opportunity cost of moving from point B to C, what is that opportunity cost going to be? Two, two cameras. Again, we're giving up two cameras <coughs> to get one more CD player. Now, we can also go the other way. What if we're located over here at point F? <coughs> and you want to produce cameras. Okay. So let's move from point F to E. Okay. What do you have to give up? One CD player. Okay. And what do you get in exchange for giving that up? Two cameras. You get to get two cameras. <coughs> Okay, so how would you express that in a sentence? I'm going to call on someone. Let me see. If I don't get a quick volunteer. Miguel Lopez, where are you? How would you express that in a sentence? Okay, read it to me. The opportunity cost uh, of uh, all the ones. Okay, it's always one. That's always one. Of one, and what are we trying to produce now? Cameras. Of one camera. Since we're going in the other direction, is how many CD players? Cost us to produce one camera, cost us half a CD <coughs> player. So the resources that we would normally use to produce a CD player, it only takes half of those resources to produce a camera. Okay. So we're measuring what that trade-off is. Okay. Questions? Okay. All right. This is linear. You see that it's a nice straight line. Because if you went from point B to point C, from C to D to D to E, you would see that the opportunity cost of producing CD players is two. If you go the other way, you would see that the opportunity cost of producing cameras is one half. But this assumes that the resources are perfectly transferable. Like the engineers that are producing cameras know how to produce CD players, and things are perfectly substitutable. But as you use more and more of those resources, you know, there's some engineers that are very specialized in camera production and some that aren't. So you're going to have diminishing marginal returns. So the real shape of the production possibilities frontier is going to be curved. So in your book, the PDF looks like this, and that curve represents diminishing marginal returns. Okay. Okay, questions?
questions on that? Okay. So you can stop for a moment. Okay, so the problem I want you to work out is we have another company, and that company produces CD players and cameras. And I want you to find the opportunity cost of producing CD players for this uh, company and find out what the opportunity cost is of producing cameras for this company. So I'm going to give you five minutes to work this out. You can turn it off. We start with the zero at the origin. Remember, zero is the smallest. First one I mentioned to you should be on the x-axis. And we have cameras. So point A is zero CD players and 15 cameras, so that's point A. Point B is one CD player and 12 cameras. Point C is two CD players and nine cameras. Point D is three CD players and six cameras. Point E is four CD players and three cameras, or five CD players and zero cameras. Okay, so this should be what your PPF looks like for, um, for ACO. Did everybody get that? So, now what is the opportunity cost of producing, um, if we're over here at point A and ACO wants to deploy its capital and its people and its labor to the production of CD players, how many cameras does it have to give up? Three. 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 And so our formula is what you give up over what you get. So it's going to give up three cameras and it's going to get one CD player, okay? So that opportunity cost is three. Okay, if we go from point B to point C, we have to give up how many cameras? Three. three. And we get? Two. Do we get two? If we go from one to two, what do we one. get? One. We get one more, okay? If we want to go from point C to point D, we give up how many cameras? Three. 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 And we get how many more CD players? One more. One more, okay? So the opportunity cost of producing a one CD player is three cameras. Okay. If we go from point D to point E, we're going to give up three cameras, and we're going to get one CD player. And from here, if we go from point E to point F, we're going to give up three, and we're going to get one more CD player. Okay. So. The way you would say this in a sentence is, the opportunity cost of producing one CD player is three cameras. Okay, so we're going to write that down somewhere. Okay, for, I'm going to put it down here. Okay, for ACO, opportunity cost of producing One camera is three. Is that right? One camera? No. no. One CD player. Player is three cameras. Okay. What is the opportunity cost of producing one camera? Point three 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 mm -hmm. or one third, right? Yes. Why? Because if we're located over here at point F and we want to produce cameras, well, we have to give up the production of one CD player, and when we do that, we gain three cameras. So if you look at what you give up, you're going to give up one CD player, and you're going to get 
three cameras. So this becomes the opportunity cost of producing cameras. <coughs> yep. Okay. So we're measuring trade-offs here. What is the trade-off? What is the opportunity cost? Okay. Any questions on how to do this? All right. So the third thing that we use the production possibilities model for is to measure what we call comparative advantage. Okay. Comparative advantage is a key um, concept that is used in international trade. Okay. Why do we trade with China? Why do we trade with India? Why are we sending our people, you know, our business overseas? How come we don't produce t-shirts in the United States? Why do we let all this production go offshore? So when we're looking at what's called comparative advantage, we're looking for the business, the individual, or the country that has the lowest opportunity cost. Okay. So what we want to see is, does it make sense for the United States to produce t-shirts when we should be looking at research and technology and maybe some things that are more advanced? Shouldn't we outsource things that are you know, uh, not so complicated to countries that would benefit more by that. Okay. It's going to cost us a lot if we dedicate our labor to learning how to sew instead of dedicating our labor to learning how to do um, medical research. Okay. So where should we allocate our resources? So in comparative advantage, what we're looking at is which country has the lowest opportunity <coughs> cost or which company has the lowest opportunity cost in producing something. Um, so, this concept of comparative advantage came about in the 1700s with David Ricardo, who's a classical econ economist based on Adam Smith. So, if you're in any form or fashion going to be a teacher, you need to know that. Um, and so, basically, England and France were always fighting with each other. And uh, England produces wonderful textiles and cotton, and France produces wonderful wines. Their country is better suited to the production of wine. Um, England is better suited to the production of textiles. Now, who's the, what's the fashion capital of the world? Paris. Paris, right? So who imports all that cotton? France. Paris was importing all this English cotton. And the English love good wine. But So David Ricardo said, rather than fighting with each other, the way that we can neutralize and improve relations with each other is work on trade. And England should focus on the production of cotton and textiles, and France should focus on the production of wine, and instead, just engage in trade, and look at those areas where the opportunity cost is lowest, okay? So, comparative advantage means you're going to do those things, or it's those things that have the lowest opportunity cost, okay? So, in this case, we have two companies. We have ACO, and we have JCO. Now, which one has the lowest opportunity cost in the production of CD players, and which one has the lowest production opportunity cost in the production of cameras? JCO. ACO? Okay. JCO. Okay. Let's see. JCO. Production. What is JCO's opportunity cost of producing One CD player is how much? Two cameras. Two cameras. Okay, my writing to do that. Okay, so in this case, who has the lowest opportunity cost? JCO. JCO. So JCO should produce. Is it because they have more money or things are cheaper? Um, you know, it's because their skill set and maybe the, the way they produce their, their internal operations, maybe they specialize, they're just, they have engineers that are better suited to that production, mm -hmm. they can just do that with the lowest cost. Okay, so it's, um, it's not that they have more equipment or that they have more money, it's that that's where their skill set is. Okay, so it doesn't cost them so much to do that. I mean, think about yourself, if you, um, who's a really good house cleaner? What? Who cleans, who cleans your house better than anyone else in the whole wide world? You. You do, right? <coughs> um, and can you hire somebody to clean your house? Yes. 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 And how much does, 
he or she cost? Pick a hundred. hundred bucks? A hundred bucks. hundred? Okay, like a hundred dollars. So it costs you a hundred dollars to hire somebody. Let's say you have a job where you earn fifty dollars an hour. Okay. Would it make sense for you to take the day off to clean your house? Why not? Right. So the opportunity cost for you not to, to take the day off and to go work and clean your house is going to be how much? How much are you giving up? A hundred. You're just going to take the whole day off. Oh. Like four hundred. Okay, it's eight hour day. Eight hours times how many? How much hours? Eight hours times fifty dollars an hour. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. So you would be giving up four hundred dollars to clean your house. It would make more sense to hire somebody, pay that person a hundred dollars, because that's the that's better for you because you're hiring that person. $100 for this person might be a lot of money. Their next best option might be staying at home. So the opportunity cost for you is better to stay at work. And it's, it's the comparative advantage is that this person can do it at a lower cost than you can. This person can clean your house at $100. It's going to take you, you're going to give up $400. Does it mean that you do it better? Or you probably do clean the house a little bit better. but the cost for you to do it is too high. So you're going to outsource it. Okay. So that's that's what we're talking about, the comparative advantage. You know, should you do it or should you outsource it? So in this case, of these two companies, who should focus on the production of cameras? JCO. Okay. JCO should focus on the production of cameras. Who should focus on the production of CD players? ACO. Because it costs these guys Half the CD player, right? Half the CD player to produce a camera, and it only costs these guys a third. So their opportunity cost is lower. So this becomes a rationale for engaging in international trade or for engage for outsourcing components. Okay. So we use the model to explain this concept. Okay. So comparative. I'm sorry, but there's just gives us an idea of what it costs that company versus this company right. and to produce it, but we're not talking about real dollar amounts. So, I mean, even though that they might, their opportunity cost might be lower mm -hmm. uh, to produce the cameras, these guys might be producing it cheaper. Um. Producing them cheaper in dollar amount? Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember opportunity cost is everything you have to give up, right? So that would be rolled into that as well. Now where do they, if these, if it costs them less, so yeah, maybe um, with respect to pricing, okay, maybe that would be the case. But here, we're just looking at opportunity cost, which means what? Labor, the cost of your labor, the rent that you're paying, um, it means land labor, uh, the interest rate that you paid to get your capital. Okay, so it rolls everything into there. Okay, now where they decide to produce, you know, do they decide to produce here or where they decide to produce on that uh, production possibilities curve is going to be based on marginal benefit, marginal cost. Now, if it costs them, if these guys, it costs them three cameras to produce one CD player. And say the camera is selling out in the market for a hundred dollars. Okay, um, so that three hundred dollars is part of the cost that they're going to weigh in and compare it to uh, producing a CD player. So they're going to weigh in that cost. So opportunity cost includes everything. So we talked about why are you here? You're paying for your school, so that's the cost that you paid. But then we look at you could be at breakfast, you could be at home, you could be at work. Okay, so that cost includes everything. Okay. That's a good question. Any, any other questions? Okay, so that is that. Then finally, the last, there's two more things that the production possibility curve models. So you guys understand this? Kind of, sort of, yeah?
Okay, so we use the production possibilities curve to model um, economic growth. So when we look at economic growth, You know what, let me go back. I'm going to do comparative advantage and how we use this um, in a country. Okay, let me erase this. Growing, we're having more job opportunities. The standard of living of a country is getting higher. Right? So, let's say we have these this production possibilities curve. And we know that any point on this curve is efficient. Okay, and we know that any point inside the curve is attainable. And any point outside the curve is unattainable. Okay, so let's say we are producing two things. Let's say we are producing butter on this side, which is a domestic good. And we're producing guns or military equipment on this side. If all of our resources are fully employed, we're located on that PPF. If our resources are not fully employed, we're going to be located inside. What if we have an increase in labor? What if there's a population boom and now we have um, double the population? What happens to our resources? Our resources grow, so can we produce more? Yes. yes. So that's going to cause our PPF to shift outwards. And now, is this point over here attainable? Yes. Yes. And now we're actually being inefficient, right? Mm -hmm. So this is economic growth. If these resources contract, what happens? Do we have decline or growth? Decline. 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 Okay. All right, so this is economic growth. And this is economic decline. Okay, so it's time to go, right? We have just two more concepts on this to cover, and we'll cover them on Wednesday, no class, Monday. Okay.